Satire. In times of political uncertainty and tension, it has been a part of American culture since our great republic was founded. And in our current political climate, the polarity of politics is ever present. President Trump has supporters and detractors who are both equally as passionate about him and his administration. Now, a man who is quite possibly the longest running Trump satirist is Kurt Anderson. Anderson has teamed up with actor Alec Baldwin to write the new book, You Can't Spell America Without Me, from their perceived perspective of President Trump. Within its gold, Trump-stamped embossed covers are musings on the president's take on current events, fake news, the media, his ties to Putin, and special counsel Robert Mueller. And we're delighted to have Kurt Anderson joining us now with both a satirical and serious look on our times. Kurt, it's nice to have you here. Happy to be here. Now, we, we mentioned that you have been involved in satire and even parody with regard to Donald Trump for much longer than most people. You go back yes. to the 80s. Right. What was the original attraction that you had to him? Well, in 1986, my uh, partner, Graydon Carter, and I were uh, starting a magazine called Spy Magazine. Um, One of the great magazines of all time, Thank you. By the way. And, and uh, Donald Trump was not really well known then. He was getting well known in New York City. And, and w The Spy was a magazine of satirical journalism. We did journalism and lots of investigative pieces on Donald Trump, as well as just making fun of him as much as we could in whatever way we could. Which is what you did to everybody, by the Which way. Which we did to everybody, uh, absolutely. Well, everybody who deserved it, <laughs> as I would say. <laughs> Which kind of means everybody. Yeah, <laughs> and he was a great, he was just this extraordinary character. He was then what he is now, except he wasn't president. He was just this little guy, 40-year-old guy, trying to, trying to make buildings, build buildings in New York. But uh, a braggart, a liar, a bully, all the things that uh, we've come to know and not love. Um, uh, so he was a character. He was a regular recurring character in, in Spy. And as with all many of our recurring characters, we invented uh, an epithet for him that we would always try to refer to him as short-fingered vulgarian Donald Trump. Um, uh, we, Graydon and I had both worked at Time, and Time back in the day had, had also had those kinds of phrases attached to their, to people. So short-fingered vulgarian Donald Trump. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a phrase and, and a, and, a, and an observation, the short fingers, that then weirdly uh, came back into play when he was running for president, which was astounding. Among the many astounding things that happened while he was running for president, the fact that the, the length of his fingers became a debate point on a national National stage television. Was, if I had had my mouth full of coffee at the time, I would have done a spit take. I, would, would you, as somebody who has chronic, chronicled yeah. him yeah. In, in your own way, for literally for decades. <laughs> yeah, 30 um, years. And, and, I stopped for about 15 or 20 years, but. And then you, yeah. you were drawn back into yes, it. Exactly. Would you have ever anticipated that, even though he mentioned, he would toss out the yeah. idea of running for president? Yeah. Did you ever, during that time, actually believe that he would run for president? No, of course not, because it was a ridiculous idea that this guy would ever uh, be able to jump through the various hoops and, 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 and get support and get a nomination and, and become president. No, that was ridiculous. And get 60-some million people to vote for him. Correct, exactly. No, it was back in, uh, when Spy was around in the, in the late 80s, and he would flirt with that idea, and we encouraged it. And we did a national poll uh, saying, no, look, 4% of the people want you to run. And this was great material run. for it you. Was, it was nothing but great material. Yeah. Now, let's talk about the book. Yeah. Again, You Can't Spell America Without Me. Yes. And the subtitle is The Really Tremendous Inside Story of My Fantastic First Year as President Donald J. Trump. Yes. Where'd the idea come from to the do an entire book? Alec, uh, it was Alec. Alec, who last October, right at the end of the, uh, it was only last October, amazingly, uh, at the end of the presidential campaign, uh, w w started playing Donald Trump on Saturday Night Live. Whatever the hell your name is. Was planning to do so uh, three times. And then he'd be done with that because, of course, he wasn't going to be elected president. Then he was elected president, and um, uh, uh, people responded to his caricature of, of, of the president-elect uh, strongly. Uh, strongly, by the way, a Trump word. He, he, we, we, we've been acquaintances and friends for some time, and he came to me at the beginning of this year and said, this is a good idea. Some, I, I mentioned this idea, he said, in a, in a, to some booksellers. Of, of doing a Trump memoir, and they all applauded, like, is this a good idea? And I thought about it and thought how we might be able to do it and said, yeah, I think it's a good idea. He said, well, will you do it with me? And 
Well, they were off to the races. The, the, and the, the humor in this, and, and again, people need to realize this. This is satire. It's humor. Yes. It's parody. Yes. And it's it's apparent from the from the beginning inside the cover, in your bios on the back. Alec Baldwin says, oh, this is a great idea, and I, I went to Kurt, and I figured this is a way for me to do 5% of the work and get 50% of the credit yes, exactly. on, on the book. No, and, he, and he's, again, he's been very graciously honest about, mm -hmm. about how, how this collaboration happened, but he was a great collaborator, and, and I would write and send him things, and he would say, well, have, yeah, and how about this? And then he could say this. So there, there, there's definitely, there's Alec, Alec, Alec Baldwin lines aplenty in here, but I, I, yes, I, I'm, the, I'm the novelist, and I did most of the writing. You have, and, and for better or for worse, because I, I think there are supporters of Donald Trump who could read this and, and laugh about it yeah. and, and see the, the humor. But you have captured. Maybe. You, well, <laughs> yeah. you've captured his voice. I think so. How did you do that? I, well, again, I, I have uh, been, been a student of his for 30 years, as you say, and then the last couple of years, along with everybody else, been uh, uh, listening to and reading his, his uh, statements. Then I, I really spent some weeks, a couple of weeks, doing nothing but immersing myself in the unedited transcripts of interviews. He has a particular dialect. I, I constructed uh, uh, a kind of uh, a phrase book and lexicon for myself of here's the adverbs he goes, where here's the weird uh, digressions he does. I, I learned the language, which in a certain way, because he is so kind of transparent, when he's giving interviews and he suddenly digressed to say in a completely different direction to essentially promote himself or say how great he is or say uh, how bad other people are, uh, one starts understanding the rhythms of his language and through that really, I think, understanding th what's going on inside that mind. The notion, as we mentioned before, of, of political satire, yeah. political parody, even comic impersonation yeah. has been an important part of our, our, our presidential landscape. Sure. I, mean, I go back to the days of, of JFK yeah. and, and what was it, Vaughn Meter. Vaughn Meter. Vaughn Meter. First family. That made a, 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 was having a great career. as old as I am. So, yeah, we are. Uh, un, unfortunately, cut short yeah. by the tragic death of, yeah. of President Kennedy. Yeah. But Vaughn Meter was out there on the Ed Sullivan show and doing, if you remember, comedy albums yes, that you and they, I remember. They were huge hits. Yeah. Um, Richard Nixon had his impersonators. Richard Nixon made fun of himself appearing on Laugh-In. Yeah, and which was a great, of all people, Richard by the Nixon way, a great that. Roger Ailes piece of advice. Go on yes. Laugh-In, Mr. Mr. Mm -hmm. Would-be President, and, and, and you'll, see what happens. You'll, you'll humanize yourself by making fun of yourself. So we've seen it throughout, yeah. through both President Bushes, yeah. uh, certainly Bill Clinton, you know, impersonators. Um, so, so it's part of our, our political yeah. tradition. That being said, what sort of reaction are, are you seeing or hearing or getting um, from, from the Trump folks? Uh, all. Do they recognize this as, as part of that great I, tradition? I, 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 other than one day when uh, Alec and I were uh, uh, promoting this book and he said he, that he had heard, as he has, from somebody who, who worked in the White House closely with the president until fairly recently, that uh, the first lady, that Melania Trump, was a big fan of his Alex impersonation of the president on Saturday Night Live, that is the reaction we've had where they came out and said, no, this is totally untrue and certainly not. Um, so that's the reaction we had to that. Otherwise, um, if, if any of them have read it, I, I think they would, as you say, see that this comes uh, uh, perhaps terrifyingly close to how the president uh, talks and thinks. And especially the, the last few days, this last week of, of still, still nuttier, more unhinged tweets, I think I, I've had the sense of, wow, I, 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 the arc of the book, as you know, goes, gets pretty dark and strange at the end. Uh, and and, and these, this, these last days and week of, of, uh, of his tweets have, have been sort of shockingly close to things I've, we imagined in this in fictional uh, depiction. Mm -hmm. Life imitating art. Well, in, in uh, many ways. Terrifyingly, yes. <laughs> I love you told me you were able to put this together in about two and a half months. Yeah. Is, is there room then for more volumes of this as we proceed well, through well, we'll a see. Trump administration? I mean, uh, my belief has always been and remains that he's going to be president until uh, January of 2021. So certainly uh, we'll, we'll see how things develop and what versions of Trump uh, uh, in, a book, in another book or in other media we can, we can make happen. Well, once again, it's called You Can't Spell America. Without me, the really tremendous inside story of my fantastic first year as president, Donald J. Trump. Kurt, thanks so much. It's Thank been you, a pleasure. Yeah. Take care. Bye.